everyone. Welcome to Learning Literature with Porva. In the last video, we discussed the historical background, literary features and literary movements of the modern age. In today's video, we are going to discuss 10 important modern age writers. So if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, then do subscribe to it and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update. Let's begin our discussion with the modern age novelist. So at first we have Joseph Conrad. So colonialism was an important theme in his novels. Joseph Conrad had a deep sense of the tragedy of life. We have already discussed in our earlier video how pessimism was a dominant theme in the modern age writings. So in Joseph Conrad's novels, you can find that the main characters often die. So the first two novels of Joseph Conrad were based on his own experiences in Malaya, Almir's Folly and Outcast of the Island. Next, he wrote a very famous novel known as The Niggers of the Narcissus which is based, which is a very moving story of life on ship. Then he wrote Lord Jim, which is told through the iconic Marlowe, who reappears many times in Joseph Conrad's latter novels. Then we have The Heart of Darkness, which is the most popular novel of Joseph Conrad. And there is an overwhelming sense of evil and corruption in this novel. He also wrote another novel called Nostromo, Tale of the Seaboard, which is based on the coastline of Central America. Next, we have George Orwell. His real name was Eric Arthur Blair. And he was born in Motihari, Bihar in India and he worked as a police officer in Burma. So he wrote this essay called Shooting an Elephant which is based on his real life experience of shooting an elephant when he was working as a police officer in Burma. He became popular for his allegorical novella, Animal Farm, which is based on the Russian Revolution of 1917. So basically, Animal Farm is a political satire and the actual name of the book is Animal Farm, a fairy story. So it tells a story of a group of animals who rebels against their human farmer in order to create a world where all the animals are free, equal and happy. Next, George Orwell wrote 1984 for which he gained immense popularity. 1984 is a dystopian fiction and although the novel was published in 1949, it was set in 1984. So it tells the story of a totalitarian state which controls every aspect of its citizens' behavior and also its citizens' thoughts. So the leader and dictator of this totalitarian state is referred to as the Big Brother. And the protagonist of the novel is Winston Smith who works under the Big Brother but he hates the party. And he writes down his rebellious thoughts in a diary, thereby committing thought crime. He knows that one day he will be arrested by the thought police. Next, we have James Joyce, an Irish author who became popular for using the stream of consciousness technique in his novels. James Joyce also wrote a collection of 15 short stories called Dubliners during Irish nationalism. He wrote the portrait of the artist as a young man, which is a stream of consciousness novel. And it is semi-autobiographical in nature. It tells the story of Stephen Didylus from childhood to adulthood. The book is divided into five sections. And the childhood parts are written in simple childlike language, whereas the adulthood parts are written in mature language. Then James Joyce wrote Ulysses, which is another stream of consciousness novel. 
It tells the story of one day in the life of Leopold Bloom on 16 June 1904 in Dublin. Now every year till date, that particular day, 16 June, is celebrated as Bloom's Day in Dublin. So that's how popular Ulysses by James Joyce became. Next we have Virginia Woolf, another modern age writer associated with the stream of consciousness technique. So she wrote Jacob's Room, a novel in which we cannot see Jacob but we know about him through his room. It was an indirect study of character. Then she wrote Mrs. Dalloway, which is a stream of consciousness novel. It shows one day in the life of Mrs. Clarissa Dalloway, an upper society, upper class woman living in post World War I England. So Virginia Woolf shows us the hidden thoughts of Clarissa by using the stream of consciousness technique. Then she wrote to the lighthouse, which Virginia Woolf considered her best work. It is another stream of consciousness novel that centers around the Ramsey family, who visits the Isle of Skye in Scotland between 1910 and 1920. And uh, this novel is divided into three parts, the window, time passes and the lighthouse. Then Virginia Woolf wrote Orlando, a biography. Now this novel is based on the family history of Virginia Woolf's lover, Vita Sackville West. Finally, we have D. H. Lawrence, who popularized the concept of primitivism in his novels. He hated the values of the modern mechanical civilization and loved the primitive and natural. The White Peacock is his first novel. Then he gained popularity for his novel Sons and Lovers, which is autobiographical in nature and it shows the relationship between a son and a mother. Then another popular novel of his is Woman in Love. It is actually a, the sequel to his earlier novel Rainbow. Both these novels talk about the Branklin sisters Gudrun and Ursula. Finally, we have Lady Chatterley's Lover, which shows the relationship between an upper caste woman and a working class man. So that's about the modern age novelist, which we saw in this video. Now, if you want to study the history of English literature with major writers, then you can visit our online academy www.learningliteraturewithpurba.com and sign up for the online course where we will discuss all the literary ages and the major writer of each age. It will be a set of 28 online live classes and PDF notes will be provided with each class. So classes will begin from 22nd February and will take place every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. So do check it out. Now let's take a look at the modern age poets. So at first we have William Butler Yeats. He was an Irish poet and he was a strong nationalist. He was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1923. He wrote the English preface for Tagore's Gitanjali, for which Rabindranath Tagore won the Nobel Prize. Now, among his notable poems are number one, Easter 1916. It was about the Easter rising of Ireland in 1916. Basically, Ireland was protesting in front of the parliament to break free from England's tyranny. Then he wrote, the Second Coming, which is about the turmoil created by the First World War. Then he wrote No Second Troy, which he wrote for his lover, Maud Gorn. And another famous poem of Yeats is Sailing to Byzantium, where he uses this journey to Byzantium as a metaphor for spiritual journey. So the theme of the poem is Man versus Nature. 
It shows the transience of life and the permanence of nature. Next we have T.S. Eliot. He was born in America but he settled in England. So he got the Nobel Prize in 1948. He was a poet, a playwright and a literary critic. Let's take a look at his notable poems. Number one, The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock. Now this poem uses the stream of consciousness technique. Prufrock is unable to make decisions. So we can see similarities with Hamlet's character. Prufrock wants to meet a woman for tea and ask her for marriage. And the epigraph of the poem is taken from Dante's Divine Comedy. Then we have The Wasteland, which is the most popular and notable poem of the 20th century. It has all the literary features of the modern age. And it is a fragmented dramatic monologue divided in five sections. Burial of the Dead, Game of Chess, Fire Sermon, Death by Water, and What the Thunder Said. Among his notable plays, we have Murder in the Cathedral, which is about the assassination of Archbishop Thomas Beckett. Next we have W.H. Auden, who was the leader of the literary group called the Auden Generation. His notable poems are number one, Musée de Bio Arts. It was inspired by his visit to a museum where he saw beautiful paintings by famous painters. Next, he wrote Funeral Blues, which is about the intensity of grief. He also wrote a very famous elegy called In Memory of W.B. Yeats. And he also wrote another famous poem called September 1, 1939, which he wrote on the occasion of the Second World War. Now let's take a look at the famous dramatists of the modern age. So we have George Bernard Shaw. Now he got the Nobel Prize in 1925 and he also won the Oscar for Pygmalion. So he won both the Nobel Prize and the Oscar. And his most notable plays are number one, Arms and the Man. It is a comic play about the futility of war. Number two, Man and Superman. It is about the myth of Don Juan. Number three, Pygmalion, his most famous and notable play. The title is taken from the Greek mythological figure called Pygmalion. And there was a very popular American musical drama film based on Pygmalion called My Fair Lady. And another famous play of George Bernard Shaw is Saint John. It is a tragedy play based on the life of French military figure of 15th century Joan of Arc. Lastly, we have John Millington Singe. He founded the National Theatre Society in Ireland with W.B. Yeats and Lady Gregory. His notable plays are number one, Riders to the Sea, number two, Playboy of the Western World, which is a study on the nature of heroism and hero worship. So that's it for today's video where we discuss 10 important modern age writers. I hope you found the video helpful. If you found the video helpful, then do like it and share with your friends. I will be back soon with a new video on a literary work. Till then, stay tuned to Learning Literature with Purba. Subscribe to the channel and also stay connected on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you for watching.